What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro2Go and Lens Rentals, and this is week seven of our challenge series here on the channel. And in this challenge, we're gonna be doing light painting. Now, I did a bunch of light paintings a few years ago and they didn't turn out very good. But since then, I've learned a bunch of tips and tricks that I'm gonna share with you in this video to get you some really awesome results that look like this or like this. And I wanna challenge you to go out and shoot some of your own light paintings using the techniques I'm gonna talk about in this video. If you do, make sure to share them on social media and tag us using hashtag LensProtego at home as well as at LensProtego. That way I can see them and share them on our social media. Now let's get into talking about some of the gear that you need to do these light paintings. Now the great thing about this is you don't need a ton of gear. First, obviously you need a camera, but this can be anything from a DSLR to your phone. You just need to be able to have manual control over all of your settings like aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. The main one being the shutter speed. You wanna be able to have that be a couple seconds long so you can actually have time to do these light paintings. The next thing that you want is gonna be a sturdy tripod. Now we're using a video tripod because this is one that we have, but you can also use some of these smaller photo tripods as well as the switch pod, which I think we're gonna be using to get some of our lower angle shots. Now the big thing with this is you don't want the image to be moving. Because we're doing these long exposures, the shutter is gonna be open for a while, so if the camera gets bumped, you're gonna get some blurry images. And to go along with a sturdy tripod, you also want some way to remotely trigger your camera. Now I have a Sony, so I'm using the Sony imaging app, which is gonna allow me to remotely trigger the camera while I'm out doing the light painting. You can also set up the timer internally to be like 10 seconds so you can run out and take it, as well as buying a separate trigger that mounts on top of it and plugs into the camera. And then the last thing that you need is obviously some light to do these light paintings. Now this comes in a bunch of different varieties. You can get small lights like this Loom Cube, which is gonna give you a hard point source. You can also get small little panels to do your drawings. You can use your flashlight on your phone if you wanted to. And in our case, we're gonna be using some of these bigger Astera tubes, which are totally overkill for this setup. But I think we're gonna get some really cool results with some of the capabilities and effects that these lights can do. So now that we have all this gear, let's talk about some camera settings. Now the one main thing that you need to do is put your camera into manual mode so that your settings and things aren't going to be changing when you're turning lights on and off in the dark. And the specific settings are going to vary depending on your scene, but you really want to focus on the shutter speed. Having a 1 to 30 second shutter speed for you to be able to do this light painting is ideal, and you're going to adjust all of your other settings around that. If you have a subject in the shot, say a person that you want to have sharp and in focus, you're going to want to stick to a 1 to 2 second shutter speed. Any longer and it can be hard for your subject to stay still in the frame while you're doing the light painting and you're going to get a blurry image. After you have your shutter speed selected based on your subject and the time that you actually need to paint in your scene, you're going to want to expose for the background. So adjusting your other settings like your aperture and ISO to get the background and sort of the scene exposed the way you want it to. Trying to keep the ISO as low as possible to reduce the noise in the image. So that's pretty much the basics you need for light painting, but let's start shooting and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks as we're going along to make these shots even better. Going? The first tip that I have is make yourself invisible. Now the reason some of these photos look so cool is you can't actually see the person who's doing the light painting. Now there's a bunch of different things you can do to kind of help yourself disappear. You can wear dark clothing, you can move faster while you're actually doing the light painting, you can hide behind your subject, and you can also make sure that no light is hitting you, so blocking the light from hitting your body or your clothes. Next thing is to start with the light hidden from the camera. One way to do this is to turn your back to the camera and have the light facing the other direction. This way you're not gonna get a hot spot when you start the exposure. And the last thing is it's all about trial and error. It's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of practice to get these images looking good. So go out there and practice and do a Google search for light paintings and get some inspiration. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one and a huge shout out to my buddy Ian for helping me film this whole episode and shoot some of these photos. If you guys wanna share your challenge photos that you took, make sure to tag us hashtag LensProtego at home as well as at LensProtego so I can check them out and check out the rest of the challenge series for more inspiration and some skills to learn. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button because it truly does help out and let me know what kind of videos you want to see more of. Also, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every single week and I'll see you in the next one.